Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope that you are doing just great um, despite being in a lockdown and despite being forced to to take up the distance learning. So we will continue today with our family tree, IT profession uh, professions family tree and uh, this is a small little example based on what I was showing you before. Now I have, as you can see, I have modified a bit this code, I have modified this code a bit and I have also gotten a bit more accustomed to the Google Charts API. So what I've changed is, uh, first of all, for each and every data row I now use this type of formatting. Um, so V is going to be the value the actual value which you can use later on as a parent. So let's say I have here an engineer. Okay, let's say something uh, more complicated, uh, like programmer. So for this data row, the actual value with which I can reference it later will be a programmer. But the formatting and the thing that the user is going to see in my web page is going to be software developer, programmer. Now let's say from programmer I have um yeah I have for example a system programmer stemming from from the regular programmer and you can see here that I'm referencing the parent profession simply as a programmer so I am using the value not the formatted uh, styled look but the value and um this way it's going to be easier later on so, and I've also added some professions. Uh, in my opinion, the software developer or programmer stem of, of IT professions of this family tree should look, look uh, more or less something like this. So we have engineers. Uh, from engineers we get software engineers, network engineers, technicians, and, and so on. And from software engineers we get software developers or more commonly they are known programmers and we can divide programmers into system, web, game, application programmers and for example web we can also uh, subdivide into front-end, back-end, full-stack, game we can divide in audio or graphics now the, div uh, the actual division is up to you this is just my example, my, my short short vision of how things could look but essentially this is up to you now, uh, what should we do next? Uh, the next step is to style. To actually create some sort of uh, cascading style sheets file and to write our own unique style. Now this is pretty. This is the default style that the Google Charts API offers. Pretty enough, but for example, let's say I want um, the text in, in, in first three tiers to be bigger. I want the background to be, let's say, green, I'm partial to green or, or to pink. I want, um, let's say, some border around these uh, boxes. So let's style it. First thing we should do is we should uh, include a reference to our style sheet and create the sexual style sheet. For example, so how do we write that? Write it like that link at L and I've missed the letter already at L style sheet and now href basically this means the reference this is the place where your actual style file is um, how is it called let's say mine will be mine will be called style 2 CSS and I will also include uh, some additional info which says that this this uh, type of file is specifically text and CSS or cascading style sheet file. Alright, now the second step we should create this style to CSS because right now it doesn't exist and if it doesn't exist then your web page is just going to ignore it. So to do so let's go file, new and for now don't write anything just save it as a CSS document so file save as 
in the same location in which you have your HTML file. I'm using the same location also. Now let's call it style2 and please don't forget to change the format because if you will if, if you leave it just as text txt then it won't work you have to find the cascading um, uh -huh, cascading style sheets file here it is CSS I always lose it in, in this long list so CSS cascading style sheets file and click on save so now we have two files and we need to work on both of them simultaneously. We have the HTML file and we have the style, in my case, style2.css file in which we are going to describe all our beautiful styling options. Now here you can see also uh, talking about the overall organization of my files. Here you can see I have a separate folder for images because I have a lot of them. Um, here I have the HTML file and here is my CSS file. Since they are both in the same location, in the same folder, I don't have to write anything else here in the href, in the reference. I can just leave only the file name. Now if I would uh, create another folder, let's say usually it's a um, CSS folder, it's called CSS, then I should also also write it in here to show the actual path to my CSS file. But since they are both in the same uh, folder, I can just skip that. So, style to CSS. Now, to to actually create some sort of st some sort of styling um, for your organizational chart, you have three options. Let's begin the first with the first option. Now, the first thing we could do is to include another option here. When we are drawing the chart with the, this command, uh, command uh, chart.draw and we are giving the data from which to draw this chart and later we can, after the comma, we can include some options. In this case, for example, from the code uh, which, is, which was given as an example, we already have an, one option, allow HTML is set to true. That now this is done so we can see our tooltips and a lot of other things we should be working with this one. But we can put another comma here and we can specifically show some other options. In our case, this option is called um, node class. Now if you, uh, in, in, in some ways, if you are curious about this node class, how to reference it, or maybe some other properties, then you should visit the same, the same um, website, which I included in the description last time. Here are um, property names for nodes, for configuration options, and here you can see this node class that I'm referencing right now. Node class and, well, how would we like to call it? Let's say default, default style. Let's call it default style. Okay, step first, done. Now let's go to our style2.css and let's create this actual class. So in our case, it's called default style Here we go. And here in between the brackets, we can write our styling options, if you wish. Now, usually we will begin with some sort of background colors just to, just to check if everything is working. And please remember, when you are changing some things in HTML or in CSS, please be sure to save them first. Like in my case, I've done some changes to the HTML file, I can see that and I've done some changes to the style CSS file. So I should save both and only then my changes will be vis visible. Please don't forget to do that. Now let's say background color already we have some made options here and um, yeah how to choose your colors by the way this is a pretty pretty tough thing to do. If you are in doubt you can al always go find some RGB color codes, color tables. My personal favorite is the rapid tables. You can use the predefined colors here 
or you can use the predefined colors here my only thing uh, to suggest to you is don't use the names like yellow, yellow green or uh, olive drab whatever that is please use the hexadecimal code otherwise uh, it may it may cause an error sooner or later it will so let's take um, hmm okay let's take the powder blue color whatever that means and don't forget to include a hashtag. So this code, color code, should begin with hashtag, then six letters or numbers, and that then a um, semicolon. All right, let's save the CSS file. Let's save the HTML file, and let's try to refresh it. OK, so now some changes. We can see some changes. The color has changed to <laughs> whatever that is, pale blue something something. And um, well, that's it. We didn't specify anything else. When you are using this note color, um, note style, note class, though, uh, please be careful. It erases all of the default styling options. So you can see here that our boxes had rounded corners. Now they don't. They had some pretty text uh, font options. Now they don't. So you have to rewrite that with your own hands. Let's say, let's try to fix the border thing. So we want our text boxes to have rounded, rounded uh, corners. How to do that? We can say, we can use the border radius. So border radius and um, okay let's go with 20 pixels let's save it refresh it a little bit better already so we, <laughs> we should also have to change the colors this looks awful um, now one other thing we should also do is to change maybe the text the font itself so um, let's use the font family and for example, I will take the Lucida console. It's a courier type of text and let's say monospace. And I will also increase the font size because these, these letters are too small for me. Well, I'm old. I'm allowed to do that, say that. Font size, let's say 20 pixels. Uh, let's save it a little bit better but still not quite good enough so let's change the colors maybe um you can do the opposite for example you can ch uh, you can take some say dark blue color as the background and to change the text color you just write in color let's say white Or if you would like to use, um, I think it was six Fs. The white color, black is six zeros, so the white is six Fs. All right, let's use the hexadecimal. And let's save it and run it and let's look at our changes. Well, a bit better, still not quite good enough but a little bit better. Now you get the idea. You can use whatever or whatever type of custom options you want here. And these options will be applied to all of the boxes. All of the boxes. Now here's the thing. What if you would like to change only one box? Or let's say this one tier of boxes. So this level, uh, which is underneath the software developer, this is one level, let's say, of my tree. And uh, I would like it to be not blue or, or, or maybe I would like it to have bigger text size or something like that. So in this case, we also have two options. These are the uh, leftover two options from the three I mentioned before. Option number one. In here, when you have the formatting, um, 
let's say tag we already have the div the container and uh, we use the div to store images so for example here we have system programmer uh, div system programmer then the image and then the div ends now uh, it's easy to style any div it will only style uh, the things that it contains in this case we can style this text system programmer and we can style this image we can't style the whole box though using this div but we can at least uh, style the contents so di let's say div then we say we have some sort of style and since this is the 0, 1, 2, 3 this is the third tier, third level from uh, top I will call it T3 save it and then in here I have to also define this T3 level dot T3 basically my uh, name for my style and here I can write some some things let's say I will just copy this text styling option text styling option and I will increase the font just to show just to see just to check and verify if the changes are working or not and I didn't yeah and of course I forgot that this is called class not style yay <laughs> this is why it's not working uh, let's refresh this oh wow I've changed it to I think 40 yeah just to test that and it's huge let's change it back to 30 save it refresh it well at least it's a little bit more visible so that's a plus now I would suggest that the top tiers or the top levels should be using a bigger font and then the smaller the level levels down below should be using a smaller font so bigger font smaller font or text size whatever uh, now the third way so also you can um, style your inner div elements text and image in here text and images now the third option that we can use is um, is to use the set row property this is done before you are drawing the chart and this is important so let's say I will write a comment styling styling the rows and um, we say data because data is what I've called my data table so I should uh, use the same name as here data table so in my case this it's called just data set row property okay uh, now we have to choose the node which we would like to customize in this case the engineer is node number zero software engineer is node number one two system programmer three four five and so on and so on and so on in any case you can experiment so in my case I will just try to write in the um, try to change and modify the top level node the first one or the zeroth one so the zeroth node and I will change its style property and after the comma I can describe the new style or the additional st <coughs> style whatever would you like to do let's say I will change the border I will say that this is a 3 pixel thick solid white border ok let's save it and I can't see anything mainly because my background is white okay let's also maybe try to change the background color background color maybe black okay let's try to oh the black one is really hitting you in the eye well at least that works 
3 pixels solid um, let's try to use that yeah you can't really see the white border I think I should change it uh, just for the example purposes I will change it to red or something otherwise I can't just just can't see yeah okay now the red one we can actually see so this is one way of doing things uh, here in the description of options and methods you can see the node class which we used before and you can also see selected node class so you can change also we changed only the node class in the sense that node class means is this <laughs> I can't node class is what you see right away selected node class is visible when you click on a box so in this case you should also change the selected node class otherwise it looks <laughs> not so good to change the selected node class you will write it in here after the comma Let's say I will maybe just copy this option not to make any mistakes selected node class and then say you have um, you will create a new CSS style not the default style but let's say selected style and of course don't forget that you have to also create the selected style in here let's just copy it for now rename it to selected style and the background color could be so in, in, in the default box we had dark blue background and white letters now maybe we can switch that so we can use white background and dark blue letters let's save it oops not that refresh it yay it works looks pretty funny but it works um, and um, speaking about other options so we've used two node class selected node class or we've used three and the style option here you can see that there are also again there are two options simple style and selected style these are used in a similar way just here uh, you will reference either style or selected style it's up to you but of course I suggest that you should modify both otherwise it's not gonna look good now here you can see I've been accidentally switching back and forth this is my example that I've styled before so as you can see these text blocks are a bit bigger these are smaller and I've thought about the uh, colors a bit so they look nice together or at least nicer together I would suggest to try using the styling options and not to leave the default styling because as you as you saw it looks a bit unfinished and unrefined so I suggest you try to challenge yourselves and um, create something beautiful and good luck